Have you ever created night scenes in Unity? If you have, then you probably know that it's hard to create a cinematographic night scene with different sources of light and emission. In this video, we will show you how to create a flickering effect on shiny signs. I loaded a demo scene here from our package. You can see there is a building, but there are no lights on it. It doesn't look really attractive. We will adjust some emissive elements to attract player more. Let's move to our simplest element, which will be this open sign. I will create a new shader graph and will select URP lead. You can double click to open the window. With shift plus space you can edit anything in Unity in full screen mode. So the first thing we need to do is to sample the texture. I will create a texture variable and name it texture. Then I will create a sample texture to the node and put the texture into one of the inputs. I will set output of the node to both color and emission. I will create a variable intensity and multiply it with the output to the emission. It will help us to control intensity of the emission in the material. Now I will create a material and assign it to the open sign. We should assign texture and set proper intensity. And you see that this sign is already work. It already attracts player size, but we want to make it even more attractive. We will try to use some flickering effect for this. The first step is to achieve a square sine wave. We calculate a sine function based on the inputs of the time. We should also multiply time by frequency to control the speed of our flickering. But it's just a sine wave. We want to make a square one. For this, I will use step node. Sign function outputs are ranging between minus 1 and 1. Step node makes everything above 0, 1 and everything below 0, minus 1. It makes each 0 because we set it to 0. Now we need to add output to the final multiplication. Now when I go to the editor, I can change frequency and you can see this open sign is now going from dark to bright. Let's add some more variety to flickering effect. Right now we cannot control timings of bright and dark periods. Let's add them to the properties. I will name them on and off time. Last time we used sine function and step function to create this square sine wave, but there is more optimized function that helps to create the same effect. We will use modulo operator. As first input we use time value and as the second we use on and off time sum, so the whole cycle time. Next we use step node, but this time we use on time as an each. Then the result goes to the same multiplication. With this small change we now can control how long are dark and bright periods. For open sign we will use same values, but for another sign, which is 24-7, I created a new material and set these values differently. It is acting as expected. Let's move to our next type of the sign. We will move to this big VR club sign. The whole sign will use just emissive material, but the U will be broken and flickering randomly. For the whole sign, I will create just standard unity material and set to emission the texture that I need. And for the U, we will create a separate shader. Before, we used some cyclic waves to describe our function. But now we need to do some kind of rasterization. The function should change in its small steps. We will create a new variable to control this process. I will name it rate. Then we use time and rate to take modulo again. Then we should subtract this modulo from time and use this result for sampling the noise function. Now in the editor we can change this rate value. I set the material to letter U and it's now flickering randomly as if it's broken. Let's move to the next effect. There is a small outline here, which is probably not visible right now. And if I just use a mission material on it, it looks pretty boring. So what we will do instead, we will apply some special texture that will be moving. We created a good UV map for this object, so we can control it in the shader. We will use this gradient texture that just represents the gradient that will be moving, the color. I will also create a separate shader graph. I will repeat the process a little bit, I will sample a texture, and then I put the output to the color and to the emission. Then I will use time value to modify X coordinate of the UV. The the modification will go with adjustment. I will also create a speed value to control this low speed. And we will keep the Y value. Let's put this input into sample texture to denote. And now we get desired result. So that's it for this video. But I will also show my setup for post-processing. Without post-processing, this scene would look not that shiny and not that nice. We have some tone mapping here and different kinds of color adjustment. 
But really, the main thing is bloom. If I change some intensity or threshold here, you can see how easy the scene is changing its appearance. And the second most important effect is depth of field. It helps us to blur out some lights on the background. You can play around with these parameters, change Gaussian to Bokeh. They all look really different, but do the job fine. If you want to make your scene look even more beautiful, check out our special video about URP post processing that we link in the description. We also do leave the link to the source files of the shaders that we made today. So that's it, thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe our channel and see you next time.